Awesome. So we're coming to the end of June. So I thought this evening's class, we would stick with our um, Muladhara chakra theme. So this is our low back down through the legs, um, little focus on strengthening and toning our pelvic floor, Mulabandha root lock, get into some of our feet work as well. So I think we'll do some of our opening for the front of our quads and hips like we did on Sunday, get into some hamstrings then down into those legs and feet. And then starting next month, which is next week, um, we'll move into uh, Svadhisthana Chakra, which is the hip region. So we'll get more good stuff for the hips and low backs. And of course, do a little bit of everything. But if anybody has any requests in particular, I'm all ears. Awesome. All right, sounds like we're, we're good to go. So I'm actually gonna have us, we've been starting in a supported um, down angle pose, but tonight I'd like us to start in child's pose. This can still be a supported version of our child's pose with um, pillows, blankets, grab your towels, yoga blocks if you have them. I have my folding chair waiting for me. I'm gonna move over to my mat. I am gonna mute us, but remember, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself. You can also um, use the chat box at the bottom to send me a message. And I do a pretty good job keeping my eye on you guys. I have your videos going and on the screen. So I think I got everybody. All right, so here we go. Um, and also, thanks for tuning in. It turned into a beautiful evening. We've been getting some much needed rain out here, which is nice. So. This would be a nice way to wrap up our, our evening tonight. Um, so for child's pose, if you wanna make it a more supported version, taking your bigger pillow or bolster in front of you, opening the knees nice and wide, touching the toes together. Remember, if that puts too much pressure on the knees, you may also use your blankets, pillows, and towels behind the knees, or simply keep the hips elevated higher up resting more on your forearms. So why deep child's pose will allow most of us to go a little deeper into the pose that does create space for our belly. So if that's comfortable with or without the pillow, reaching and extending those hands forward. If we are using the pillow, we draw it underneath the belly. And then we might turn our head to one side and wrap our arms around that pillow or blanket or place the hands on top of our support with the forehead down. If you want to forego the prop, you can be in a more active version of our child's pose, spreading the fingers wide, stretching through the index fingers, opening up those inner armpits, the side bodies. Now remember, we do want our head grounded in this pose. This is a grounding pose. We're allowing the weight of the body to sink to the ground. So if the head isn't easily touching, use your arms or a prop. We'll close our eyes and start to redirect our attention inward. Allow our minds begin to settle down onto our mat within the four corners of our mat. Make any adjustments we might need to do here in the beginning, loosening up the clothing, getting comfortable, so that we can press the pause button from our day and then find some stillness. Let's take a nice smooth breath in and out through the nose. On the inhale, start to feel some of this expansion in the body. And on the exhale, feel a sense of release and relief, softening the body, letting go of unnecessary tension and tightness, melting the whole body towards the ground. Continue to breathe as smoothly and evenly as possible through the nose as we start to feel and notice the whole body mentally moving through our body from the crown of the head out to the fingertips all the way down into the toes continue to relax the muscles of the body loosen the joints recognizing and honoring any areas that maybe need a little extra tlc in our practice remembering that our whole practice becomes a moving meditation and we move mindfully, practicing ahimsa or nonviolence towards ourselves and our body. 
And then the area of our body that we'll be focusing a little bit more on tonight is the low back, the tailbone, the pelvic floor, down through those thighs and knees, all the way down to the feet. And this area of our body does produce some sense of security, safety, and grounding. So let's tall, take one more nice big breath here. On that inhale, breathe in as much fresh air, prana and energy as we can. And on our next exhale, really big breath out to let that body and the mind ground back down towards the earth. And then on our inhale, we'll float the head and the body up. If you have props, just slide them off to the side here. We'll go right up into our tabletop position, spreading those fingers nice and wide, stacking the hands as broad as the shoulders. Nice, strong arms press into the ground. Draw low belly in, knees are stacked underneath the hips. Keeping your hips level, stretch that right foot back behind us, tucking the toes under and opening up the eye of the knee, giving that leg a nice big stretch. Breathe it in. Exhale, bring right knee down. Inhale, left leg stretches back, toes are tucked under, pressing that weight back as much as we want to intensify that stretch. Exhale, bring it down. Inhale, draw the right foot back again. Continue to stretch out the right leg. For those of us that want a little bit more strengthening, draw the belly in and try to hover the left knee, left knee and foot from the floor into our runner's plank position. Hands are grounded, nice big stretch for the right leg. Breathe it in. Exhale, both knees come down. Re-extend the left leg behind, toes are tucked under. Same thing, stay with your stretch. Add a little bit more strength and you draw the low belly and press the ground and then lift the right knee, right knee and foot from the floor. Be mindful of where your head is in space, breathe it in. Exhale, tabletop. Fingertips, hasta banda, rounding through the knuckles or fists for wrists at any time. Continuing to flow with our breath for a few rounds of cat-cow. So on the inhale, we'll relax the belly. Lift and lengthen from the crown of the head to the tip of the tailbone. On our next exhale, draw that belly in, scoop the tail under, round the back up. Drishti towards the belly button. Inhale, roll that breath all the way up the spine. Try to lead with the tip of that tailbone to the crown of the head. Exhale, scoops tail under, tucks and rounds the back, stretching the muscles. So flow through a couple more. Remember, we can add other little movements here to help stretch out the back. Get everything loosened up. And our evening classes, we often do feel a little bit more limber than our morning classes just because we've been doing some more movement. Not necessarily. <laughs> I've had a pretty lazy day, but. And then we'll come back to neutral and tabletop. From here, let's walk one hand's distance forward so our arms at more of an angle. We'll tuck our toes under. We'll go right into our first inversion, downward facing dog. So press into the ground, draw the hips up, Create some space there, and on the exhale, we'll shift our weight back and down through those hips. Have a look at those feet. We want them to run nice and parallel to each other, a few inches apart. Toes pointing forward, heels drop down behind the toes. Look at the hands. Make sure your hands are where you think they are. Index fingers pointing forward, rooting into the mound of the index finger and thumbs but externally rotate those upper arm bones away from the ears so the neck is long, head is floating. Take breaks at any time by dropping back down to the knees or child's pose. From down dog, we'll give our legs more of a stretch. So on the inhale, let's float our heels up as high as we can. We're trying to get into the crease of the toes. Nice, strong crease. Exhale, drop your right heel down and bend the left knee and really try to ground that right heel to the floor. Inhale, tippy toes, stretch out the soles of the feet and the toes. Exhale, sink the left heel down, bend the right knee. So you're still stretching the toes of the right foot. Inhale, heels up. Exhale, right heel down, sink it to the ground. Inhale, heels up. Exhale, left heel sinks to the ground. Inhale, heels up. 
Exhale, sink the heels to the ground. Remember, just bend your knees more deeply if you have tension in the low back. Inhale, we're gonna float ourselves forward into our plank pose. Might as well get into some of our planks right away. So feel the strength, you're building your strength up from the ground up. Continue to press to the first knuckles of the fingertips. Squeeze the hips together, compact those hips. Draw through that low belly. Kneeling plank, totally acceptable. You just gotta really scoop that tailbone under. Head is in line with the spine. Let's all take one more breath. Big breath in, big breath out. And then next inhale, float your hips up. Exhale, heels back towards the ground. Inhale, lift both heels up. Exhale, we'll drop the knees back down to the ground. We'll give our wrists a break, but we'll try to do this in broken toe pose to start. So we'll walk our hands back towards us as we sink our hips onto our heels. So we're in this kneeling position with the toes tucked under. Intense pose, I know. A Little bit much, you can come to kneeling, double up your mat underneath your knees or add some cushion there. Now as we're stretching out the soles of the feet, we'll do our praying mantis for our hands to help release our wrists. So you'll drop your hands towards the ground, glue your four fingers together, Pinching the forefingers to the thumb, and then you really intensely pull the fingertips towards the forearms. So it looks like this from the side, like a praying mantis. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then exhale, just shake the hands back down to the ground. Inhale, pinch. Pull it up, bend at the elbows, bend at the wrists. Exhale, shake it on down. One more time, pinch and pull. Inhale it up. Exhale, shake it up. Hands are gonna walk back forward to tabletop. Flatten out the tops of the feet and tap off the tops of the feet to the ground. And then level off those hips. Give your right leg a nice big stretch back. Just stretch off the knees. And then the left leg will stretch back. So we're gonna revisit broken toe pose and try to go for Padagustasana. This is a pose we've been practicing this whole month. It's not for everybody because of the knees, but we'll see what happens tonight. We'll always modify. So walk your hands back towards you, sit back to the heels. So practicing here, modification or kneeling, and then you all can go right into down dog or forward fold if you don't wanna practice toe stand. So in toe stand, your feet a couple inches apart, a little closer, and your knees should be touching. Props beside the thighs will help, or your fingertips, draw the low belly in. We eventually try to lift the knees up. So now we're hovering on the feet. And you can bring your feet closer together. They can also be a couple inches apart, but your knees should be squeezing together. And then we play with the balance, a lot of core as well. To start one hand at a time on those thighs. And then hands to heart. Good modifications, good trying. You can always try it and come out of it. Next variation is to extend the arms straight forward parallel to the floor. So those of you that are not gonna lift up due to knees or any other areas, you may simply bow forward, straighten the legs and hang out in your forward fold. And we'll catch up with you there. Those of us that want to try the rising up, you got to squeeze your knees, squeeze your knees. And on the inhale, we try to use the strength of our legs to lift all the way up. It's intense, I know, good job. Now lift all the way up, open the knees up, reach up to the ceiling, tippy toes. On the exhale, drop your heels down. You might need to open the feet a little wider, micro bend those knees and we'll all swan dive back down to forward fold. So this is where we'll catch up for a moment. So in our forward fold, feel free to plant your legs a couple times, straightening one leg at a time. Remember to modify, bend knees, plant elbows or hands on thighs. To let the upper body go a little bit more, ragdolling hands to elbows. Remember we want nice strong feet, we want to unlock those knees, nice strong legs, Let's start thinking about those lower bandhas. So we didn't do our breath work today, getting those muscles to wake up, but we'll start now. So I want you to squeeze the pelvic floor, the perineum, 
Feel those muscles pulling in and up. And then also tighten up that lower abdomen just below the navel center. Do you try to release the shoulders, head, and neck if you're allowing your arms to hang. Next inhale, we'll do our back strengthening and our halfway lifts. So bring the hands to the shins or even higher. Squeeze the muscles of the back to float the chest. Look slightly forward. Over-exaggerate that upper back. Exhale, fold back down, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. Nice big squeeze. Exhale down. A little bit more challenging. Inhale, halfway lift. Locus the arms beside the body, palms are facing in, squeezing the upper back and the triceps. Exhale, fold. One more. Inhale, halfway lift. Squeeze that upper back. Exhale, sit back, Utkatasana. Arms reach forward and up. So do you lengthen the upper buttock down. Foundation first, and make sure your feet are parallel and your knees are pointing towards those toes. Shrug the shoulders from the ears, or simply place your hands in front of your heart if you hold tension in your neck and shoulders tonight. Going right into a little bit of balance. So squeeze your muscles and try to hover the right foot from the floor. See what happens. Focus your gaze. Bring right foot down. Squeeze the muscles to lift the left foot from the floor. Exhale, foot down, sink a little bit lower down. And then the next inhale will rise all the way up to extended mountain. So straighten the legs, float the arms up. Drishti gently looks up. Turn your palms out and exhale, float the arms back down. Right into Tadasana, let's feel our foundation here. Mountain pose is our foundational pose for all our other standing postures. So pick up your toes, root the mount of the big toe, inner heel, root the mount of the pinky toe, outer heel. Let's try to glue the big toe to the ground, other toes still lifted. Now try to glue the pinky toe to the ground, the three toes in the middle lifted. If you want, peek down for a moment, see what's happening down there. If it doesn't happen tonight, that's okay. It's more important to get those four corners rooted into the earth. And then allow all the toes just to spread out towards the ground. Let's unlock those knees, so no jamming of the knees backwards. Feel like you're trying to pull your kneecaps up your thighs. Draw that low belly in. Pelvic floor could be squeezing up and in. Turn the palms forward tonight just to give our chest and heart a little bit more opening. And remember, relax the head on the shoulders. No tension in the face. Let's do a couple of our palm tree poses to strengthen the lower half, our balance and our brain. Inhale, arms reach out and up. Heels lift up. Exhale, heels down. Bring the palms to touch. Lower the hands to the heart. Two more, just our simple version of inhaling, rising up. I say simple. Sometimes this pose is really challenging. Exhale. One more time. Inhale, reach, reach, reach. And then exhale, bring it back down. So from here, we are gonna go into some of our bigger standing poses. First, we'll do our standing straddle pose, Prasarita Pado Tadasana. So we will start in a neutral position. You'll have to turn yourself on your yoga mats. I'm gonna use a chair for my initial prop, or you'll take blocks or books. So we'll get ourselves organized for that. If you're using props um, down on the floor, bring them about shoulder width apart in front of you. So if you have two blocks, stools, whatever you're using, try to open them up so that the chest stays open. <clears throat> if you are using a chair, then make sure your chair doesn't slide on you. And we'll open those feet nice and wide. Ankles might come as wide as the wrists. And then you're gonna point your toes straight forward. And remember, legs are strong, no rolling to the inside or outside of the feet. So we just woke up the four corners of the feet. Same thing here, mound a big toe, inner heel, mound a pinky toe, outer heel. 
And really stretch out through the fingertips, but relax the head and neck. Breathe it in. And on the exhale, bring the hands to the hips. So I'll just turn sideways. So we will see a long spine. At this point, we also want to turn the toes slightly in. So your toes should be angled in, heels out, internally rotating the hips. Again, inhale, we want to lead with the heart without hyperextending. So pull those low ribs in. The exhale tips the pelvis. Continue to unlock the knees. So don't jam your knees back. Try to pull up through the thighs. Come about halfway and just pause there. Breathe it in. On the exhale, maybe we go a little further. Remember, don't force and push. Always acceptable to come out of the pose a little bit. And now we will hold for several breaths. So those of you that would like to and have space to move the hands towards the ground, you may. I usually suggest just fingertips so that we don't transfer all our weight, just drop into the palms. Continue to keep the front of the spine nice and long. And then on the exhale, as you contract the abdominal muscles, you might go a little further. So some of us might be bringing our props or our fingertips between the feet, bending the elbows straight back. Once you're more in the inversion, you may either keep your drishti right underneath the tip of the nose. So this is some com uh, purposeful compression at the back of the neck. Or release the head towards the ground, looking between the legs. But do continue to draw your shoulders away from the ears. Just don't let your shoulders sink and set. Still work your upper back muscles. The feet and legs should be nice and strong. Nice big stretch all the way up the backs of those legs and inner thighs. One more breath. And then the next inhale brings us back to our halfway lift. So we'll need to walk our fingertips forward if we've brought them back. Elevate the chest. Use your props. Strong legs, strong core. Exhale one hand at a time to the hips. And then inhale, lift up to the crown of the head. Remember, if you get lightheaded, we sit down. Try to inhale even more and reach your arms up towards the ceiling. Bring those palms to touch. Exhale, hands to heart. Good. And then heel, toe, or step, step the feet back together. So the next pose that we're moving into is Parjvottanasana. And those of you that have turned long ways, you'll want to situate yourself back to the front of your yoga mat and take your props with you. So whichever side of the mat that you want to be facing, doesn't matter. We'll stay facing the same side instead of moving front to back. That'll make it easier on us. So Parjvottanasana is um, <clears throat> an intense side stretch, but we often call it pyramid pose in English because from the side it forms a pyramid with our legs. This is going to give us a nice big stretch of the backs of those hamstrings. My low back people, we just need to be really mindful because it can put a little pressure on the low back, so strong core. So once we've resituated ourselves and our props to the short end of our yoga mat, We'll start back in Tadasan. So your feet are still hips width apart, okay? So you have a little bit of space there. Stand nice and tall. Inhale, let's turn our palms out and just reach it up. Create some length here. Exhale, bring the hands back under your hips again. And our hips are pointing forward and stay, stay square this whole pose. Right foot will step behind us in that same line about two feet. Now the heel might angle in just slightly, 10, 15 degrees, but it's important to make sure the right hip stays forward and the left hip back. And we often tend to collapse our knees in this pose as well, if you're a hyperextender like I am. So we wanna unlock those knees, pull up through the quads, pelvic floor, low belly. And we'll lead with the heart, but don't hyperextend. Keep your low ribs connected, so inhale. Again, we're pouring from the pelvis, so on the exhale, we tip from the hips. And try just to come a little bit, 40 degrees, halfway, 20%, whatever that is. Be mindful where the head is in space. Try to keep your hips nice and level. Inhale. 
Exhale, maybe there's a little bit more space. So we should start to feel this up the back of the left leg. This is the leg that we're going to be stretching. Now you may stay halfway and stay connected to the core the whole time. For those of you that have props and you'd like to utilize your chair or your yoga blocks, you may begin to bring your hands further down. Again, try to keep your fingertips doing the work. Big, big stretch. Just let your exhale, allow those muscles to stretch, continue to pull the low belly in. Ideally, we're keeping the weight equal in both feet, but you might do a little shifting front to back, side to side, and see how that changes the stretch for you. Now, those of us that have gone further into the pose, we're able to keep a long spine and the belly's close to the thigh. At that point, you may do a little rounding in the back. So you take chin to chest, throat lock, and you try to bring your forehead to your knee, and that's gonna stretch more of the connective tissue through the back. Those of us that aren't quite there, that's okay. Continue to draw that left thigh bone up and back, level the hips. Our drishti might be forward to our big toe. If you have throat lock, a little bit more challenging to breathe, little sips of air, and I'll try to take just a couple more breaths here. One more breath in the pose. On our inhale, it's halfway lift. Especially if you've gone further into the pose, you need to walk your fingertips forward, shoulder width apart. You need to start re-engaging if you let some of it go. Especially to protect our low back, make sure you're using your upper back. On the exhale, even bend your knees a little bit if that helps. Bring one hand at a time to your hips. And then inhale, press off that front foot, rise up through the crown of the head. Good. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Extend the fingertips down. Pause and Tadasana. Observe, notice, and breathe. So these poses are partial inversions too, especially those of you that have been going deeper into it. So use your breath to help regulate the blood pressure. Turn the palms out. Inhale, reach your arms out and up. Create some length. Exhale, bring the hands back to the hips. Left foot steps back in line with that hip. The heel might angle in slightly. We're not on a tight rope. Our hips are square to the front of the mat. Left hip forward, right hip back. Unlock the knees, plant the feet firmly, draw those lower bandhas or locks in. Inhale. On the exhale, try to pour that pelvis. Don't need to go into the fuller version or your fuller version right away. Take it slow. Inhale, create some more space. Exhale, maybe go another 10 to 15%. Every inhale, an opportunity to create space. Every exhale, an opportunity to maybe move a little further. So depending what variation you're doing, you can keep your hands on your hips, behind the back, or start to bring your hands towards your props in the floor. Low back should be as level and square as possible. Maybe do a little shifting in the weight of the feet just to see how that affects the stretch of the back of the right leg. One side might feel a little different than the other. Moving further into the posture, if the spine is long, belly to thigh, tuck that chin towards the chest, try to draw the forehead to the knee. Little rounding at that point is okay. Receiving that nice big stretch of the back of the right leg. Couple more breaths. One more breath in the pose. Next inhale lifts us up halfway. Walk your fingertips back out, float the chest up. Strong feet, legs, and backside. 
Even bend into the knees a little bit as you exhale, bring your hands to your hips. And then inhale, press off that front foot to slowly bring the head up. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Exhale, left foot steps forward. Extend the fingertips down. Pause and breathe in Tadasana for a moment. Turn those palms out, inhale those arms up, big stretch. Bring the palms together, exhale, hands to heart. So from here, we'll move any um, props out of our way so we have safe space around us. We will come back anywhere in your space for one more balancing pose here. <laughs> so for this balancing pose, we are going to add a little bit of movement. This is going to be crane pose. This is a nice way to strengthen and tone the legs and, and just create some fluidity in our body because we've been holding some more stagnant postures. So this will get the energy flowing through our joints again. So for this one, the feet can be a little bit wider and the arms just kind of softly hang beside the body. We'll shift our weight over towards the right leg. So this is our strong standing leg. And then try to find a little bit of hover here. So we'll start to lift and lower the toes of the left foot. Feel free to use a wall or a prop around you. And then we're gonna engage that left thigh and you're gonna start to pull the knee up and we're gonna let the foot just kind of dangle. And I want you to dangle your fingertips too. So no energy in the fingers and toes. A lot of strength here around that core. So inhaling now softly, float the wrists up, little bend at the elbows into our crane. On the exhale, we'll float back down. Now you may touch down or try to find a hover. And we'll do that two more times with our breath. Beautiful, inhale, using the strength of the core, soft fingertips and toes, exhale. One more with the breath. So this next exhale will bring us back down. Just try to land as gracefully as possible, like we're landing on some water, trying to create a few ripples. Pause for a moment in stillness. Keep your focus, your drishti and concentration. Now we'll shift some of our weight over to the left. Nice, strong standing leg. Start to find a little hover, lift and lower the toes. And then using the strength of the thigh and the core on the inhale, pull the right knee up, but let the foot just dangle. Fingertips are dangling, little bend at the elbows, our wings come out to the side. And then on the exhale, we float back down, either hovering or touching. Good, two more. Inhale, pulling that knee up, soft, fluid movement. Exhale. One more. And again, on this exhale, we come to land. Just try to land as gracefully as possible. The feet can be a little wider, that's fine. Let the arms float right back down to Tadasana. Let's turn those palms back forward, spread the fingers and toes, a little bit more opening through the heart. The head is nice and relaxed. Nice strong feet and legs though. Think about those lower bandhas. Give Mula Bandha the pelvic floor a squeeze and a lift and Uddiyana Bandha in and up. And then one more big inhale, let's reach our arms out wide and all the way up to the ceiling, stretch, stretch, stretch. Gazing up for a gentle back bend. Palms touch, exhale, lower to our center. So we're gonna make another big transition here. Those of us that do not wanna lower back down through Padangustasana, don't feel like you need to do that. You can move to the front of your mat, swan dive, forward fold a little bit, transition to um, downward dog. That's where we'll all meet, it's a downward facing dog. If you would like to join me in trying to move into Padangustasana, We'll start to the back of our yoga mat. Again, feet just slightly apart and the knees come together. That helps grace the knees. So that's where we start to the back of our mat. We squeeze the knees, I sink the tailbone, I draw my belly in. Reach your fingertips forward. 
and try to lift the heels up. So you're balancing on the balls of the feet. And ideally, we're sliding down an invisible wall. Squeeze your knees, squeeze your knees. Strong legs, strong feet. Ooh, it's a challenging pose. Once you lower down, try to hold for a moment. We'll take one more breath in. Exhale, if we can reach, drop the fingertips to the floor. Those of you in down dog or some other pose, let's all meet up by walking our hands forward. Float your hips up for a moment. Draw the belly to the thighs and prance your heels out. Stretch out the backs of those knees now and downward facing dog. Shoulders away from the ears. Sink both heels toward the ground. Inhale, let's float forward one more time into our plank. We'll do our second half now. Again, just holding for about 30 seconds. Feeling this nice strength that we're building from the ground up. Kneeling plank, totally fine. Press the ground away from you. Float the head up, smile. Compact those hips. Keep squeezing, 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 and breathing. Happy thoughts. One more breath in, one more breath out. Inhale, float the hips up as high as we can. Exhale, shift those hips back and down, Adho Mukha Svanasana. One more nice big breath and downward facing dog. Just stretch out the whole back body, all the way down the backs of the legs to the heels. Inhale, heels up as high as we can. Stretch out those toes and the soles of the feet. Exhale, drop the knees to the ground. Keep them together for child's pose, a more traditional version. Flatten out the tops of the feet. Slide the hands to the feet, palms up, and try to bow the head back to the ground. You can pump your fingers a couple times. You can even take your hands to your feet, massage into the arches of the feet. Or just let the weight of the arms shrug down beside the body. Big stretch for our low back here. And then hands under the shoulders, tuck the chin on our inhale. Let's round it on up. And then from here, we'll shift our weight over to either hip and bring our feet forward. So I do want us to um, come into Janu Shashasana. We'll do our right and then left side. So Janu Shashasana, you still might want to sit up on something. So if you have your folded blanket nearby, a bath towel, some type of wedge or cushion that will definitely assist us, especially for low backs and tight hamstrings, which lots of us have. This guy might be enough. Once we get into position, I don't want us to worry about using a strap or anything in Janu Shashasana tonight. I actually want us to keep our hands pretty wide so that we can keep our heart open here. And we will sit up on our sit bones. From Dandasana, so we'll be in staff pose. So whatever prop we are using, ideally you wanna sit right to the edge of it, pull that flesh out of the way. Now, if you're really tight like me, I start with my knees bent up, or if you're higher up, you'll wanna add a rolled towel or blanket underneath the knees too, so they don't hyperextend to the ground. So most importantly, we wanna get our spinal alignment sitting up tall through the back of the spine. Really nice, strong feet, pulling those toes back towards the shins, including the pinky toes. From here, we'll step our right heel in towards the sit bone. And then we'll allow the right knee to fall open. Take support underneath the right knee as needed as well, a yoga block, a pillow. For this variation of Janu Shashasana, I want us to try to draw the heel up into that pelvic floor area part of our body that we're trying to wake up a little bit. That's also going to depend on the natural flexibility at the ankle. So some of us won't even have, be able to get there just because of our bone structure, which is fine. Um, the ball or the whole sole of the foot might come to the inner thigh. So right hip's getting a little opening. Turn so the heart is facing the left shin bone. Really nice, strong, straight left leg. And then fingertips are going to frame the left leg. And so we're actually leading with the chest and the heart again. And even if you have a lot more flexibility, I want you to continue to walk your fingertips out and wide 
and flare your elbows out to the sides so that when you're drawing down towards that leg, the crown of the head is the lead part of the body. So some of us are gonna look very differently in the pose. We do need to be careful of the low back. So nice strong core. Inhale creates the space. Exhale as we stretch out the back of that left leg, we have ability to move into it. And the belly sometimes gets in the way. <laughs> I ate a big dinner before practice, which you're not supposed to do, but I was really hungry. So toes and knees up towards the ceiling. Now those of you that are getting closer and your belly is getting closer to the thigh, again, you may start to round slightly. Chin to chest, draw and draw and the throat block, forehead to knee, the name of the pose, head to knee pose. If we're not there tonight, don't worry about it. Our drishti might be at the left big toe. Let's try to take one more big breath in the pose. On the inhale, we'll bring ourselves up. If your chin is tucked, you're more than welcome to articulate and roll up. If you have your spine in extension, just sit up nice and tall. Take the right knee, float it up, and plant the right heel right in front of the sit bone. So we have about one hand's distance between the inside of that foot and our left thigh. Left leg still stays anchored. Hands to shin bone. Inhale, prop yourself up nice and tall. Maruchyasana C, a seated twist. Left arm hugs the shin. Right fingertips float behind. Now, if you're pretty high up, you might need to take another prop behind you, but there's no weight in that back hand. If anything, push the ground away from you to create even more space up the spine. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, continue to rotate to the right. Drawing right shoulder back, left shoulder forward. The head may follow. We may also open the eyes really wide, peek behind us. So those of you that would like, place your left elbow to the outside of the right thigh, take chin mudra in the left hand. And we'll take one more breath in the pose. Big breath in. The exhale releases the twist. So the head, the shoulders, the arms and body unwind. Face forward, cactus the arms and gently bow to your left. Inhale, sit up. Exhale, slide the right heel forward. Pause and dandasana, hands can rest beside the hips. Wanting to neutralize everything, still using those lower abdominal muscles. Janusha left side, step the left heel in. Allow that left knee to fall open. In this variation, we are trying to draw the heel right up into the pelvic floor. Again, if we're lifted, the heel will hit your prop, not necessarily the pelvic floor muscles, but that's the intention. Support the outside of the left knee as needed. Fall the foot or sole the foot to the inner right thigh. Float the fingertips out, frame the leg, align the heart with the right leg. Super strong right leg, toes are flexed. Inhale, lift. Exhale, try and get hinged from those hips. So pull that belly in, contract the abdominal muscles. Stretching out the back of the right leg, left hip getting a little opening. You want to lead with the heart and extend the crown of the head forward. Continue to flare the elbows out. Heart stays open. So we're trying to use more of our muscles to contract in the front body to stretch the back body here. Instead of just pulling ourselves in the pose, trying to figure out how we use our own body to move into the pose. If the belly is close to the thighs and you have some of that length, tuck the chin, forehead to knee, get a little bit more of that connective tissue stretching. Be mindful of our low back. One more breath in the pose. Our next inhale will lead us out. Long spine, keep your extension to lift up. 
Shin tucked, roll up one vertebra at a time. Sit up nice and tall, ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Take the left knee, float it up to the ceiling, plant the sole of the left foot right in front of the sit bone, about one hand space between the foot and the thigh. Hold on to that shin bone to lift up even taller. Right arm wraps around, left fingertips float somewhere behind you. Press the ground away from you to make a little space with the belly in that thigh. Right leg stays nice and strong. Don't have any dead fish down on that right foot. I want you to flex that foot, all the toes pulling to the shin bone. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, gently rotate and twist to the left. Mid back, upper back, shoulders, head and neck, and the eyes. Open them really wide, give them a nice stretch. If you would like, bring the right elbow to the outside of the left knee, using it as a lever. Shin mudra in the right hand, continuing to twist for one more breath. Take a nice deep breath in. And the exhale unwinds the body, the head, the neck, the shoulders, face forward. Cactus the arms, exhale, gently bow to your right. Inhale, bring it up. On the exhale, slide the left leg back out. Dandasana, hands behind the hips, lift up through the spine to the crown of the head. Nice, strong legs. Really spread your toes, pull them back, including the pinky toes. Try to get them all in one straight line. And then exhale, relax. So we'll scooch off of our prop. We'll have some space behind us tonight. So this is where, um, and grabbing things if you want to now so you don't have to search for them later because we're going to come down onto our backs. If you have eye coverings, pillows and blankets that you'll want for Shavasana, you can move those things close by. Um, we're going to do our supported bridge pose tonight after we do a couple other things. So ideally a yoga block on its lowest setting will work best because it's a nice firm flat surface. But if you have something like that with a cushion, have that ready. Even a bath towel will work. It's firm and flat for the low back. Or if you have a, a blanket handy, I got my little rectangle. I could do a trifold with a blanket so I have another flat, firm surface for the low back. We're not quite there, but I just want us to have those things ready. So coming on to our back, remember the safest way to get there is just to use your hands and crawl down. You can wait for us there. If you want to join me in our slow roll down, we face forward, we plant the soles of the feet to the ground, and we open the knees wider than the hips. Now this is rounding up the back, so I'm hollowing out the belly, contracting those muscles, reaching the fingertips forward. I'm gonna try to go nice and slow. So I'm lowering my sacrum, lumbar, mid-back, tips of the shoulder blades, shoulders, and eventually the head. And once the head touches down, we'll reach our arms overhead, straighten the legs down our mat, and take our long body stretch. So flex those feet, spread the fingers and toes, let the low back gently arch. Big breath in. And then on our exhale, we'll float those arms down, walk our feet in, tuck those shoulders under, and bring our knees up and in. So we'll do that um, front of our hip opening. We did this on Sunday morning. It can feel quite nice. Um, let's stretch our legs up first and do our waterfall pose for a moment. Point and flex your feet. We've done some nice hamstring stretching tonight. So hopefully those legs get a little straighter. And let's open out into our V and our thigh stretch for a moment. Roll your ankles. Feel free to massage those muscles up and down the backs of the thighs or move the hands to the inner thighs to deepen that stretch. Big breath in. Exhale, float the legs up to waterfall, bend the knees. So from here, try to verbally listen to the instructions. We'll see 
where we go, and I'll give you lots of variations. So we want to cross just the right ankle on top of the left ankle. Then take the right hand, reach around and down, and try to take a hold of the top of the left foot. So you're relaxing the left foot, maybe just find a toe at the top of the foot. If you don't have the foot tonight, don't worry about it. Just do your best. You can still do the pose without holding the foot. Now float the right foot up just a little bit. We got to make some space here. So don't worry about the right leg yet. Just get it out of the way. Look at the left knee. The left knee should be pointing straight up to the ceiling. On our exhale, we try to lower the left knee forward and down to the ground simultaneously pulling the left foot over to the right buttock. Now when you do this, if your low back really arches up off the ground, it's probably just due to a lot of tightness in the front of the hip flexor, ilius, psoas, and quad. Do try to ground the back, keep both side bodies nice and long, shoulders relaxed down. So this might be enough for some of us. From here, I'm gonna give us some different variations. First variation, let go of the left foot and take both hands either to the right shin bone, drawing right knee to shoulder, or behind the knee for my knee people. Left knee is pointing forward and down. We don't want that left thigh flaring out to the side. And we should be feeling the pose up the front of the left thigh hip. This next variation makes it a little bit more intense for myself, but you just pick and choose. We release the right foot to the ground in front of the left ankle. Now the right knee falls open like bound angle pose. So you'll feel a little stretch for the inner right thigh, but we're still getting this intense stretch up the front of the left quad and hip. Low back should stay grounded, pull the navel to the spine, Relax the shoulders in the back of the head. One more element, reach the arms overhead, taking a hold of opposite elbows so the side bodies can stay nice and long. And then just breathe. Relax the muscles across the face. Move the cheeks if the jaw gets tight. Yeah. And exhale away everything we can. One more breath in the pose. And then we'll slide those arms down, draw the right knee up. We pull the right knee back into the body to make space to carefully slide the left foot out. Plant both feet to the ground, cactus the arms out from the shoulders, and just gently rock your knees side to side. Bring the knees to neutral. Draw the belly in to draw the knees in. Hands to knees or shins. Give your low back a little rock here. Other side. So this time, cross left ankle on top of right ankle. Left hand reaches down and around and tries to take a hold of the top of the right foot, the bottom foot, by the toes and the top of the foot. Again, we need to get the left foot out of the way, so just float your left foot up a little bit. Look at the right knee. It should be pointing straight up to the ceiling. And then you want to point the left knee forward and down to the ground. Try not to let it angle out if you can. You should never feel any weird pinching and pain around the knee. If you do, slowly release the pose. Don't force it. Simultaneously, if you have a hold of the foot, continue to try to draw the right foot to the left buttock. Right knee dropping forward and down to the ground. Feeling the stretch start to pull up the front of the thigh, hip flexor, ilius psoas. This might be enough. If we want to try some other variations, release the foot and hold on to the left shin bone or simply behind the thigh for knee people. And then gently draw left knee to left shoulder as you pull your shoulders and elbows down and press the right knee to the ground. 
to intensify the stretch. And if you like that, stay there. Next variation, left foot falls back down to the ground in front of the right ankle. The left knee does fall open and like Baddha Konasana, bound ankle pose. That's intense for me. So I'm still continuing to drop the right knee down, getting a big stretch up the front of that right thigh hip flexor. I want my low back sinking equally to the ground, side bodies long, shoulders down. One more element to reach overhead. Try to take hold of opposite elbows. Even close the eyes at this point. Surrender the body to gravity. Relax and release as much as possible. Use the exhale to do so. Try one more breath, let it go, let it go. <sighs> Slide the arms down, float the left knee up, pull the left knee in to create space to slide the right foot out. Drop both feet to the floor. Take them even wider this time, as wide as the yoga mat. Cactus the arms from the shoulders. And again, rock the knees side to side, or even move into a bigger twist and gentle back bend hip opener, front of the hip opener, into your windshield wipers. So as you exhale, you drop the knees over. The other side arches up off the ground, and the head and neck can turn the opposite direction of the knees. Your pleasure, big windshield wiping movements or little rock side to side. One more to each side. After we balanced ourselves out, bring the knees to neutral. Pull those knees in, rock out the low back. So moving into Salamba Setu Bandhasan, supported bridge pose. Drop the feet to the floor close to the sit bones. Draw the shoulder blades under, parallel the feet, toes point forward, knees point up to the ceiling. Squeeze the backside, press down through the upper arms and the feet to float the hips up. We're sliding our prop underneath the lowest part of our back, the flat sacrum part so that it supports the whole weight of the hips and the pelvis. A little bit of flesh hanging off the front of the prop is normal. Shoulders can continue to walk under. The neck should be curved naturally off the mat. Keep your drishti on one spot on the ceiling. Arms might float down, fingertips towards the heels, or roll your palms up in a shavasana, or even cactus your arms back out and open. So we will hold our supported bridge pose for several moments. If you're happy where you are, stay where you are. Again, I'll give us a few variations. These next variations will open up the iliopsoas, the quads, and stretch the abdominals and internal organs even more. So if you wanna try it, start with the right heel, sliding the right heel forward to the front of your mat, straightening the leg creating this arch from the heel to the shoulder. Most importantly, we're noticing how this feels on our low back and our SI joints. If that feels okay, draw the right foot in. Slide the left heel straight forward, straightening the leg, creating that nice arch from heel to shoulder. Now, if that side feels all right, try both heels forward. Now, I usually encourage people to keep their feet active, so both feet still flexing, toes are spreading, toes and knees pointing up to the ceiling. Slight engagement in the glutes. 
Now, especially if you have low back issues, some people do like to relax the feet and legs, but for me, that just doesn't feel good for my back. You have to figure it out for yourself. You know your body better than anybody else. This also turns into a gentle inversion, heart is slightly higher than the head, channeling that blood flow towards the throat center, beneficial for thyroid issues, our endocrine system. Counters all the sitting that we do, opens up the whole front part of our belly and body. Feel the connection with the ground here. And just take a couple more nice, slow, deep breaths. Try one more breath in the pose. We'll take our time to release this posture, especially if we're in full bridge. Step one foot at a time back in. Draw those arm bones right back down beside the body, bend at the elbows for a little bit more strength and support. Tighten up the backside. Squeeze and lift up just enough to slide the prop out from underneath the low back. Melt the back back down to the ground. Rest the hands on the belly. Gently rock the knees side to side. So at this point, if there's anything else that you would like to do before final relaxation, you're more than welcome. Generally, we pull the knees up and massage the back, but if you like this opening we just created and you want to go ahead and re-extend your legs right back out in Shavasana, feel free to do so. If you have props that you want to add underneath the thighs, the knees, the back, or the head, please gather up those props and add those or anything else you feel like you might need to do for your body tonight to get it to be prepared for our final relaxation. So I'll we'll take a moment to do those things. If we have eye coverings, gather those up. They'll help the mind and body relax a little bit more quickly. I'll guide us through a little bit more relaxation once we get comfortable here in our final pose, giving us several moments of peace and quiet, and then using the singing bowl to bring us out to finish class together this evening. So put some effort into this final pose, whatever position you're choosing to take. Loosen things up, adjust the clothing and the surroundings. Feel and notice the space around you and allow the body to just absorb into that space. Allow the weight of the body to sink into the earth. Zero resistance feeling that sense of surrender. Let the eyes sink into the sockets, smoothing all the skin across the forehead, the brow and the eyebrow center. Poof the cheeks, wiggle out the mouth, tongue and jaw. Muladhara chakra is associated with the low back, the tailbone, the bones of the body, the legs and feet. So let's start to feel all the bones in our body get even heavier, loosening at the joints, softening all the muscles around the bones. 
Feel the weight of the legs sink into the ground. Relax all the little bones in the feet and the toes. Notice all the contact points with the body and the ground below. And relax those points 10% more. The breath becomes easy and quiet. The seed mantra associated with Muladhara Chakra is the mantra LAM, L-A-M. Other mantras are I am grounded, I am safe, I am secure, So if the mind wanders away, simply bring it back to the peaceful breath or mentally recite one of these mantras over and over again as we give ourselves just one more moment of today to let go, to relax, and to feel grounded, safe, and secure. Before we move our body tonight, let's just take a moment to feel the whole body relaxed. 
all those contact points with our body and the ground below. And try to visualize and see our whole body relaxed in our space and in our place. Start to feel and notice the breath in the body, the natural expansion and contraction. And then gently breathing life into the body, waking up big toes, second toe, all the toes, wiggling the fingertips, rocking the head, rolling the ankles and the wrists. Depending where we are with our props, try to stretch both legs down the middle of the mat, inhaling arms overhead and stretching the body back out on the ground, creating space in our body, right to left, front to back. Take one more big breath in. On our exhale, we'll float those arms down, walk the feet in, draw the knees in, Rock out the back. Allow the right arm to fall beside the head, pausing on our right hand side, rolling into our fetal position and sleeping baby pose. And then keeping the eyes closed or soft, press into the ground. We'll bring the body back up, visiting any comfortable seated position and taking just a couple more breaths together this evening. Sitting up on those sit bones and lengthening all the way up through the crown of the head. Let's be mindful of our surroundings as we reach our arms out to the sides of the body, palms up. Inhale, breathing, let's float those arms up and let's gather up everything we need for the rest of our evening. Turn the palms back out, float the fingertips all the way back down to the floor and exhaling away all that other junk we don't need this evening. And let's take one more breath together. Inhaling, arms up. Bring the palms to touch. Exhaling, hands to heart. Humbly bow the head down towards the heart to honor and thank ourselves, our bodies, each other, and remembering to be grateful and thankful to anyone else that made it possible for us to connect and practice our yoga together today. Om Shanti 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 He Om Peace, Peace, Peace. And I thank you all so, so much for your continued support for all of your patience, to Austin Yoga Tree and Jonathan and Adit and Vicki and everyone else making it possible, which also means all of you. So that was fun. <laughs> I needed that. <laughs> Glad you guys were here to motivate me. 